What is up, divine beings? Peace, love, abundance, blessings. My name is Astro Poppy, and today's topic is about karmic relationships in family because this isn't an easy topic, but the truth is that a lot of empaths, a lot of healers, a lot of light workers, a lot of energy workers, a lot of spiritualists reincarnate into family dynamics that fall under karmic energies and when i say karmic a karmic relationship is a relationship where there is going to be difficulty there is going to be strife there could be potential patterns of abuse of manipulation of a lack of support and a lot of empaths and healers and spiritual practitioners and dare I say, reincarnated divine beings will end up being put into certain family relationships where they are here to elevate the bloodline. But elevating the bloodline, even though it sounds so noble, isn't an easy process. And it does take a certain level of patience, a certain level of compassion, a certain level of taking the higher road. So if you are somebody who is being treated like the black sheep or you're treated as the outsider for your own bloodline, they don't even realize that you are here to be the one bringing back the spiritual well, the spiritual fountain of magic, of power in your own ancestral line. Every bloodline has a specific form of magic, of spirituality, and due to colonization, due to the expansion of religion, there are certain bloodlines where people deny their own gifts, where people shun their own gifts. And what ends up happening is if one person doesn't do it, somebody in the next generation will get the calling, will get that spiritual knock, right? And if they don't do it, the next generation will have somebody who will receive that knock until somebody finally says, you know what? I'm going to tap in. You know what? I'm going to embrace my intuition. I am going to embrace my spiritual gifts. I am going to embrace my ability to see into the other side. And this just goes to show how indoctrinated humanity has become into believing they uh, they are anything short of power of magic of alchemy of beauty of godliness because we are gods and goddesses on earth and that doesn't necessarily mean that we're on a high horse and we have no problems or any sort of like lack of weakness it just means that we have the power to transform our life we have the power to have control and say over our own life. So to be a God is to basically understand that you have will, that you have say, that you have the power to alchemize and transform your own self and your own being. And whatever you say comes forward, right? It makes me think of the tarot card, the magician. This is who a lot of people are. They are the ones who are learning their alchemy, who are in tune to something that is higher than who are co-working with source co-working with the universe and a lot of these people who fall under the magician path under that archetype they are not going to be supported by their family and a lot of it is because you are here to break generational curses and it's unfortunate but a lot of the karmic cycles and karmic patterns that our parents went through and their parents went through whatever wasn't fulfilled and this can be a lot of things y'all this can be addiction this can be problems in relationships this can be domestic violence this could be negative talk this can be a lot of heavier subjects all right and what ends up happening is if somebody falls into that same cycle of self-destruction and harming others then what ends up happening is you come forward, you as the empath, you who was born with what some people will call sensitivity. Sensitivity means that you're just attuned more to your own senses, all right? Don't let them gaslight you and think that sensitivity is something short of perception, 
all right spider senses that is the ability to sense things beyond what is seen beyond what is just told you're able to feel energy you're able to feel vibration you're able to feel frequency you're able to feel what is unsaid in certain words or in certain dialogues all right so you came forward being the quote-unquote sensitive one you came forward to say, I do not normalize these generational cycles of trauma, uh, these generational curses, these generational forms of abuse. And you come in to really hone in on self-love and you come in sometimes, unfortunately, to embrace and embody the love that you were not given. And the thing is that when you are in the spiritual path, you realize that even though you have gone through difficult moments with your family, with your upbringing, with your childhood, you have the power in this moment as an adult, we have the star card, to be able to alchemize, to be able to change, to be able to transform. You have the power now to parent your own inner child, to give your inner child the experiences that your own upbringing denied you. So this is where we become alchemists. This is where we say, you know what? I'm not going to treat myself bad just because I was treated bad when I was younger. I'm going to figure out a way to be the difference. I'm going to figure out a way to embrace self-love, even if I was not given those tools in my early upbringing, all right? And a lot of people who fall into the path of being a healer, a spiritualist, an energy worker, a alchemist, they are here to learn how to incorporate self-love and self-love is not a destination self-love is a journey self-love is a series of daily actions so when you start focusing on self-love it's about understanding that you at a certain point in your life can no longer use wow my parents didn't give me this oh wow my upbringing didn't give me this or i've been through this tumultuous relationship you can't use those as excuses anymore there's a moment where yes you know what and this is me too i know when i have caught myself in doing things that aren't good for me so for me i feel like i dealt with a lot of my generational pains a lot of generational trauma that was passed down through partying through just falling into vices and i had my spiritual awakening in the middle of that where source was like all right like are you gonna really believe all of the negative talk that you were told about yourself are you really gonna become that archetypal villain that you were described to be when you were younger or are you gonna be the difference and really elevate yourself and this isn't about me trying to prove something to anybody, but this is about me knowing that, you know what, just because I was dismissed, just because I was treated bad, doesn't mean that I have to treat myself bad. So this is where we have to catch ourselves in our own cycles, right? And realize that whatever negative self-talk you had given to you in your upbringing, guess what? That can sometimes creep into your own subconscious. So for example, if you had a parent who always questioned your decisions, who always micromanaged you, that can come up as patterns of you not trusting your own decision-making process. And you can be very indecisive and you can be an overthinker and you could be anxious and you could be scared and you could underestimate yourself, right? So this is where you have to look at, all right, where do my thought patterns come from? Where does me short-sighting myself, underestimate, underestimating myself really come from? And nine times out of 10, I'll tell you, it came from a person who was supposed to be a caretaker, a person who was supposed to be a provider, a guardian, a parent. And dare I say, they did the opposite of building you and instead tried to disenable you, tried to disempower you. And it's unfortunate, y'all, but a lot of spiritual people end up coming from family backgrounds that there's a lot of pain. And there's a lot of trials and there's a lot of tribulations. And the reason why is because on a higher level, and this is where we get metaphysical, on a higher level, before you reincarnated here, you were assigned to help transmute and alchemize 
a lot of these generational curses that came forward through colonization, that came forward through the patriarchy, that came forward through abuse, that came forward through hatred, that came forward through separation. And here you are having to become the altar for your ancestors. And we always talk about ancestral veneration as a form of lighting candles for our ancestors, giving offerings such as flowers to our ancestors, food to our ancestors. And I will not deny the power of that, but I also want you to understand you healing, you taking care of yourself, you investing in your self-development, your self-growth, your self-love, that is also ancestral healing because guess what? You are the canvas. You are the altar. You are the next in line for your ancestors. So the energies that you start to embody, that goes into the bloodline. That goes seven generations back and seven generations forward. And sometimes, yo, one of the things Spirit had to tell me is, even though sometimes we don't like where we're from, we don't like perhaps the family that we reincarnated into, we got to acknowledge it and honor it because we get to be the difference. And even if, let's say, you separate from your family, you're not in communication with your family, there's going to be new generations in that family that are going to go through some of the adversities that you've gone through. Because as we know, sometimes generational curses repeat themselves generation after generation. And there's going to be children that are going to grow up to similar patterns and cycles that you've gone through and even if you're not in communication with them even if that and you're here out living your best life being great embodying self-love embodying compassion for yourself nurturing yourself honoring yourself in the ways you weren't honored guess what even if you're not seen even if you're not in communication, even if they give you the villain treatment, there is going to be a nephew, a niece, a somebody new in the family that's going to ask about you and is going to later on in life understand why you left that whole timeline, why you left that bell jar, why you left Whew, all those cycles of suffering and it's like do it for yourself do it for whatever future family you want to cultivate for yourself even if your family is you yourself and you in your own oasis or your own family is you and your romantic partner and your pets for example or if you decide Yo, I want to adopt children or have children, right? Like, these are all ways in which we can reset the generational narrative. But even you yourself, you can reset your childhood narrative. So whatever suffering you've gone through, whatever pain you've gone through, be the parent right here, right now for your own self, all right? I'm going to pull some cards, but I hope that this video is of service. I'm filming this right in December, which is also... The time of the holidays and this can be a really triggering time for people who do have the black sheet treatment who do go through a lot of estrangement in their family and me myself and i trust me i can relate like my family doesn't love what i do for a living but it is what it is right like at the end of the day spirituality is something ancestral i come from a mexican background so spirituality is part of the aztec the toltecs and then i'm salvadorian on the other side that comes from the mayans all right so at the end of the day yo my bloodline is spiritual my bloodline is indigenous and just because religion came over just because evangelical evangelicalism came over and i'm not i'm not gonna knock anybody down for what they believe in but here's the thing, what I believe in is in my blood and I'm reactivating the magic in my bloodline just because it was demonized through systems of power and control doesn't mean that I'm going to fall subject and pray to that. And if y'all give me the demonization, it is what it is. At the end of the day, I'm still going to be beautiful. I'm still going to be cute. I'm still going to be soft. I'm still going to be great. Speaking of, to the people who write all their Bible verses on my YouTube, thank you so much for supporting my algorithm. The people telling me to repent, thank you so much for supporting me, my algorithm. Y'all, 
people get it twisted. I'm a spiritualist. Guess what? I do connect with Yeshua or Jesus. I do connect with the archangels. I do connect with St. Michael. I do connect with Mother Mary. I do connect with La Virgen de Guadalupe. Just because I can also connect to demonology, just because I can also connect to the dark divine feminine and the dark divine masculine, doesn't necessarily mean that I'm void. I just understand my own multidimensionality. And some people can't because some people are afraid of their own darkness, all right? Because, and I'm side noting here, but when it comes to working with the dark divine feminine or masculine, they're just here to show you how to work with your own shadows. And anybody who's afraid of any exterior forms of darkness are afraid of their own darkness, all right? Because if you're out here pointing fingers or anybody's out here pointing fingers, you know, you already know how it is. They're the biggest hypocrites because they keep all their shadows. They keep all their inner demons unchecked. Anywho, y'all, I'm taking out some cards. I got the Eight of Pentacles for the Collective. I got the Justice card. It's, it's very much like you're building yourself. And the Page of Cups, you're building yourself. And I'm just being told, like, sometimes you're going to be the one who's healing and the other party isn't going to heal whatsoever. The Hermit. I feel like sometimes we would want, there's an aspect of our inner child that would want the acceptance and approval of the people that we were born with, the people that we grew up with. But I'm here to tell you, if they're not giving you the love, if they're not changing, if they're not self-developing, if they're not self-actualizing, if they are still repeating the same cycles that they have repeated from day one, the Justice card is saying, you got to do what you got to do, whether that's you setting boundaries, whether that's you distancing yourself, whether that's you not communicating with them anymore. You got to do what you got to do to be good because the Eight of Pentacles is telling me that a lot of you who are watching this are already doing your healing work, are already doing your self-love work, and it might feel regressive to go back to certain environments that you needed to heal from in the first place, all right? There's that saying that you cannot heal from the same in the same environment from the same place that caused you pain and suffering to begin with in the first place. So for a lot of you, if you're starting to distance yourself from family or needing distance from family, if they're not getting it together, there's a feeling of, you know what, let it be because the Page of Cups comes forward. The Page of Cups is romance, is novelty, is love. And this is a card of understanding that here you are now, um, able to fully, fully, fully romanticize your life, able to give yourself the experiences that you deserved when you were younger, able to give yourself the love that you deserve when you were younger. So yo, be your parent, be your best friend, be your best lover, be your best supporter. That's my message, all right? Because a lot of impasse, a lot of healers, a lot of energy workers, a lot of people in the spiritual path, they reincarnated into bloodlines that really need to re-tap into ancestral alchemy, ancestral magic, and that are really here to liberate from generational curses. So you're doing a lot of work, but this work is inner. This work does not have to be you reconnecting with people who have not done the healing, the self-awareness, or the growth, all right? You doing your own inner work is enough. Trust and believe. And that's the biggest message that I wanted to give, all right, y'all? My name is Astro Poppy. Thank y'all so much for tuning in. I'm sorry if I haven't been on YouTube for a minute. I've just moved into a new apartment, which is the new environment that you see, and I've just been settling in. And yo, it's been a good time though. So I'll be back with more videos. If y'all have any topics y'all want me to discuss, please write them down below. Stay beautiful, stay abundant, stay great. If you would like to book a private reading with me, you can find that on my website on the link below. See y'all next time.